Hello and welcome, Twills folks. My name is Devin Chowski, and today we're doing another fireside type chat. For those of you who don't know, that's a history reference, but we can get into that later. So what we're going to be talking about today are the new DOE grading policies. So for those of you who don't know, the DOE, that is the Department of Education, has just released a new set of grading policies. And though Twills is special and has its own grading policy, we do have to follow some of the rules some of the time. So what we are going to go over today is how those new rules impact our rules today and how we mix them in with the stuff we already have. And we're also going to talk to you about how those new rules impact you as a student. So without further ado, let's get into the fun stuff. The first thing worth noting is this is the Twills Astoria revised grading policy. It's not something brand new. It's built on all the stuff that we were doing before. You'll notice that we have a new grading scale, and while this all may look confusing, it's pretty much based on the stuff that we had before. Above me is stuff that I'm not really going to re-explain because you know what NY, MS, and ES means by now. On the other hand, we have this NX, N, and then numerical versus CR grades to my right. So first of all, NX, course in progress. Now it's the same for both eighth grade and for high school. It means that the course is still in progress. It roughly translates to anything under 64, which is what would be failing anyway. We get this when you don't give us enough information to calculate your grade. Unfortunately, that means that we're going to have to sign you up for summer school in that case so that you can give us more evidence to prove that you know the things. I just wanted to do a quick little aside here. Now, with the new N and NX system, it's a lot like the NY system that we already have in place. It means that you're not yet where we want you to be as a student in terms of academic achievement. It's not a value judgment about who you are as a person or as a student. It's not saying that you've done anything wrong. In fact, all it's saying is you need a little bit of extra help, and that's true of anyone at any time. So what we are going to do is try to help you. It's our job as teachers, and we actually have a plan. If you get an N or an NX, it's not the end of the world, but we do want to move all students towards that MT, which is a little bit different. Let's talk about that. I'm going to try to do this as systematically as possible. So let's start with eighth grade, which is to my immediate right. You can get a couple of different grades while you are in eighth grade. You can get an N, which means needs improvement. That's 65 to 79, which is roughly an MS on our old scale. It means that you're doing fine for your age, but you could probably be doing a little bit better. That is, unless you are in an accelerated course. For accelerated courses, on your transcript at the end of the year, you are going to see a number from 65 to 100. Now, accelerated courses include humanities, which is U.S. history, algebra one, earth science, and Spanish. In all other courses, you are going to be getting letters. But for these accelerated courses, because they're more like high school courses, you're going to be getting a very specific number on your transcript at the end of the year. So make sure to keep up your work because people are going to see exactly how hard you've worked during this school year. For high school, it's very, very similar. Now, you could get a numerical grade that is equivalent to 65 to 88, and it will impact the student GPA on a transcript if you choose to have a numerical grade. You can also select CR for course credit. Pure course credit does not impact your student GPA on your transcript, but there are pros and cons to both. It's the same with 89 to 100. In terms of pros and cons for numerical grades versus credit only, there's just too much stuff to go over on one slide, which is why we're going to ask you individually to click on the link that's included in the slideshow. That link is going to tell you all sorts of details. It's gonna give you a survey. It's gonna give you sample scenarios. And again, this is only going to make sense once you get your final transcript at the end of the school year going into the summer. What I will tell you right now is those decisions are pretty serious because 
They can impact college applications, internships and scholarships, your rankings and CUNY stuff. So at the end of the year, if you are going to go for credit only, even if that might feel like it, that it's the best decision for you, we're going to ask that you talk to an administrator or guidance just so that we're all on the same page and you've gotten all the best information that you can get. Earning Regents Diploma Requirements. There's so much good information on this slide that I had a very hard time figuring out where to put my floating head. Here's the baseline if you just want a very quick and simple explanation. You will receive passing credits for Regents that you were intending to take in June as long as you pass the corresponding course. So if you pass the class, you pass the Regents. See more information on this slide to read out the specifics. Things get a little bit technical. Now let's say you're in that NX range. That's not terrible, but you're going to be hearing from us on Monday. You're going to get an email that tells you that you have a personalized action plan. That personalized action plan is there specifically to make sure that you don't have to go to summer school. I've always told my students in the past that the only thing that is worse than going to school in the summer when all of your friends are outside playing is having to see a teacher in shorts. And we want to spare you that terrible emotional trauma. Anyway, each plan is personalized to you. You will have a person to check in with and their email will be on one of those documents. Likewise, you're going to see activities and projects to make sure that you can give us enough evidence to make sure that we don't have to give you that NX. Time for some real talk. Now we understand as students, you have a lot on your plate right now. We also understand as human beings, you have a lot on your plate right now and we wanna meet you halfway. So we're dedicated to being flexible as teachers and as a school, but we do need some work from you to make sure that we can be flexible. First of all, if you need some sort of extension, be sure to tell us. We are trying our best to give as many extensions as possible so that you have a more fair timeline to get work done. The other thing is when you turn in late work, make sure that you talk to your teacher about when it is turned in late. You can't just hit that submit button on Google Classroom and hope we notice. Throw us an email, talk to us in chat, do something to make sure that we know that work has come in. You have to submit that late work by June 17th if you do not have an NX. If you do have an NX, then we are going to be extending our coursework into the summer, but again, we really want to avoid that. Now, if you've been absent or if you've been missing evidence, there are a couple of things to know. One, attendance cannot be used to measure any student's mastery. But all teachers do need enough evidence from you to be able to make an ethical decision about your grade. I cannot, in good conscience, give you a grade if I only have one piece of work to grade you on. So make sure that you are submitting enough work to be able to be graded fairly. So you're continuing to turn in work, do your homework, show up for class, do all those things that we expect you to do normally. But how can your family help support you? Now, as we said on May 18th, if you get an NX or an N, that means you're gonna see a letter in the mail with a personal plan for you. You need to make sure to follow that plan as closely as possible so that you can get up to a grade that gets you out of summer school. If you don't receive a letter, that just means you're doing well so far. Try to keep up the good work so that you don't end up backsliding. June 17th, is our current deadline to submit all late work. That may change in the future. At June 23rd, 2020, families and students will be informed of any NX for a course and you will be programmed for summer school. But again, we're trying to avoid that where we can. The end of June 2020, report cards will be provided to all families and families can decide if they would like a numerical grade or a CR on transcript. But again, review that link. It's super important. And also fill this form out only if you are requesting CR, the parent decision for final grades. Last but not least, we have August 2020. We will inform families and students if they have successfully passed the course 
and obtained Regents exam exemption. After you viewed our whole slideshow and this video, I still encourage you to attend our town hall. Now for eighth grade and high school, that's going to be Tuesday the 19th from 9 a.m. to 9.30. That's only 30 minutes of time to figure out exactly what you're going to be graded on for the rest of the school year. I highly suggest you go. Also bring a parent or guardian so that they know what's going on in your school life as well. Any questions you want us to address in the town hall, you can add on that link down there. Once you click it, it's going to bring you to a forum that looks something like this. Uh, it's the grading policy town hall questions. If you scroll down, you can see there are plenty of mandatory fields that you have to go through, and then you can input your answer down at the bottom. Once you hit submit, we will get it and we will record those answers so that we can answer them live with you during the town hall. In closing, I just want to plug that town hall one more time. So make sure that you go to the town hall and you ask questions, even if you understood all the stuff that was in this slideshow. Because as you know, all of your teachers like to fix and fiddle and change things as we move through our work. So some of the stuff that was on this slideshow may be changed by the time that this video comes out. Again, thank you for paying attention and keep your eyes on Twill's news because there's a lot of really exciting stuff happening. Uh, Host a Thing is back, which is really, really cool. We also have Multicultural Day again, which I'm very excited to see in a digital setting. There are lots of opportunities still out there and there are lots of ways that you can still engage with our community. This has been Devin Chowski talking about the new Twill's grading policy, revised. And uh, I hope that you have an extraordinary day. See ya.